Hey guys, welcome back to Thread and Glue Designs. Uh, today I am working on spirit stitching. This is um, a type of stitching that was created by Lizzie Pruer. And so we're going to work on that. I made you a cute little new thumbnail picture. It was kind of fun. And I am waiting on this to move on over. I don't know why it's quite so long. <laughs> but... Uh, it is. It's not moving. Oh, I was supposed to hit play at the same time. Ugh. Okay, anyway, we are um, working in the Spirit Stitch book that I created. And I'm showing you, going through picking a page here that we can work on. And I made a flower, a fabric flower yesterday, and I want to be able to use it. So I went in my fabric closet and found some blue fabric that you should be seeing pretty soon. Well, I, I first I got the fabric and then I lost the fabric that I had gotten. So I had to go back to the closet and get more of that same fabric so I could use that fabric. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Um, and here I'm, I'm back at it and I'm showing you the fabric that I've chosen. And it's just a solid blue. And I am fixing to cut it to fit within our page that we have there. And I don't measure anything. I just lay it out on the page and put it about where I want it and then I go around and cut with the standard scissors first. Um, I do this first just because standard scissors are easier to move through quicker and I will however after cutting it with standard scissors go back with the um, pinking shears to prevent extra fraying on the edges of the base piece. I like fraying but not I don't want it on the base piece because that's not the focal of it. And so here you see I've just finished cutting the fabric off. And this whole time I am talking to you all in the video. However, for some reason my mic did not record audio. Um, so I am doing a voiceover for it. And you'll see me now cutting with those pinking shears. Those are great pinking shears. They're left-handed. They're Ginger, and I got them from um, online. Uh, I think it was Marketplace. I just looked up left-handed pinking shears, and they're vintage. They're a, quite an old pair, but they were rarely ever used uh, because no one was left-handed had them. So it worked out good for me. And here you see we're, we're continuing to pink a little bit. I really hope this is recording this time. <laughs> you see the beast? She woke up really nicely for us today. Didn't give us any trouble. I'm making the page fit better now. That's why I'm going back down that side. And then we have to do that top edge still. So we're going to flip it around and cut it. And I am just using a, like a beige, creamy beige color thread uh, throughout all of the machine stitching. You'll see that here. And I don't change my thread out a lot unless it's like a major stark difference. Um, then I'll change it out for something like this. But uh, primarily I try to stick with what I've already got on the machine if I can. Just because I hate to roll up a new bobbin for every different color that I end up wanting to use. So, um, we've got it cut. And I should be coming in with the flower to show you it. Any day now. <laughs> there we go. That's the flower that I made. Um yesterday. If you guys want to know how to make that flower, I'll be happy to do a video on it for you. I'm adjusting your view so you can see better. And 
In the center of that flower, I have put a, a lapel pin. It was a frog with rhinestones on its back. That my mama duck had gotten for me at a yard sale. She got me four or five different little frog ones. And um, I'm showing you kind of the construction there a little bit, but it'd be a lot easier for me just to tell you how in, in a video. Um, I am trying to decide now what I want to put behind that. I have this uh, panel that is a Laura Lee Designs panel, and I absolutely love it. I've had it for a few years now, and it has all of these little different uh, pieces down the side, and I used one piece of it earlier in this book already, so I was checking to see if there was anything I might want to use on this page, but I don't really think they go very good with it. Uh, with the flower and everything that's going on, but I do decide to relook at this panel because this panel has a ton of um, seamstresses on there with that are so fun and whimsical, and so eventually I will get back to that. I am now looking for uh, lace or trim or anything that I see that I might like to put on this page. Um, and I found a little snip piece of uh, lace that I absolutely adore. I had no clue what I was buying it for when I bought it. I just thought it was so pretty and it was on 50% off. There it is right there. And it's just so, so dainty and pretty. So I feel like I need to use that in this project. And I found some burlap. So, I thought the burlap was the perfect width and so I'm going to lay it out there and I'm going to use regular scissors because I do like the fraying on it and I don't want the pinking shears on the end but you'll notice that it is a little bit wrinkled up so I have on the side of me an ironing tray that I made out of an old wooden TV tray um, that I picked up at a yard sale and it is so handy to have when you're doing any kind of pieces of stuff and I've got a little craft iron there so I'm going to I ironed that out it doesn't look like I ironed it very much there does it I did though I did and so I'm putting on this little piece of lace snippet it's so pretty I just love it and I'm doing that by machine and I decide in a second I'll decide <laughs> I decide that um, I want to sew most of those pieces on by hand I'm, I'm by machine I'm doing that by only using the right hand page as I go through the book to start with so that all of those pages I can stitch directly to that page and don't have to worry about the back side or anything. I will go back and fill in from the left hand side once I've got the right side full. But you'll see here I did iron. I ironed. It looks so much better. <laughs> and so I'm moving that so I can stitch on the burlap and I'm just going to stitch it straight on with the machine and using a straight stitch and it's still just the cream thread I don't change it out or anything and I'm reversing there making sure to tack on the front and the ends of these since it is something that's going to stay put I have several of those little rolls of tool from the Dollar Tree. I need to start using some of those too in it. I think that would be fun, some of those colors. And I'm just going around it completely. Uh, I do go back through the lace and the reason I do that is because the burlap itself was not stitched on to the main fabric. So I need that to be stitched on. So I go back through the band on the lace to get it there. First I thought, oh, I better stop here, but then I realized I got to go on through it. And here we're going back tacking. 
and I've cut that off. Now um, we're ready to look at our flower and I use Fabri-Tac to put this flower on with and you'll see here in a moment I pull the bottle in and this is a great glue to use for any fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. It, it works great for anything. It is an acetone based glue so if it gets too thick on you um, through time then you can add 100% acetone a little bit into the bottle and it will help revive it to a thinner consistency. But you see I just liberally put some on there and I'm showing you here the bottle and flipping it over and I want the frog aiming towards the picture in the middle. So we're gluing that down and pushing pretty good. The Fabri-Tac adheres pretty quickly but you'll see it's not as quick as I'm moving. So, <laughs> so I do have to be careful of that um, because I just go straight from putting it on there to trying to do something else. And here I'm getting a piece of muslin and cutting a size down for it because I want to make um, a word a uh, little banner, I guess you would call it. And I go through and get a um, get a stamp out of my stamp collection. And the stamp says, let me get it out so I can read it to you here. The stamp says, it's better to take a risk than miss a moment of magic. And I use a smoke gray uh, archival ink pad and I'll show you that in a minute here when we get it up there. And I've used this uh, before in this book and I really liked how subtle it was. I think that the black would be overwhelming and those are the only two colors I have in a permanent ink. Um, I have a black stays on and I have this one archival gray. Why did I choose archival gray? It was on sale. That's why. That's why I got that color. But I'm glad I did. You'll see, I mean, I'm still away looking for the right um, stamp. And I, at this time, I was reading to you what the stamp said uh, so you could kind of decide with me. But I have gone ahead and I'm grabbing my ink. You'll see the ink that I'm using there. And I put that on my little stamping block. It's really hard to tell that this um, stamp is inked up with that gray because it's so pale. But it does work really well. It leaves a nice impression. And it's subtle enough that it's not in your face. But it's there and you can read it plainly when you're flipping your page around. So I'll go with that. But now we have a little conundrum. We have a lower right corner that is just blank. And it needs something in there. So remember when I talked to you earlier about the Laura Lee Designs fabric panel? I go back to it. You'll see that here in just a moment. And I look at all of the different girl options that I have on there. And what could I actually do with them? Because they're so stinking cute. Oh, first I try to do some beading. I'm, I'm a step ahead. First I try to bead around the word tag but my needle eye is too big for any of those beads to go through except for one and it was just too big so I end up scratching that idea but here I'm showing you this, the um, floss thread that I'm using and when I use this I always double over the thread and knot it together at the bottom and the reason I do this is because when it comes time to tie it off it lately when I've used my needle to do it it ties off too far up and there's this dangling thread and I just can't stand that so I do this to prevent from having to do that I can just tie it in a regular knot but um and I started I started telling you that I may have to actually get out my needle threader even though it was a large eye because 
it was kind of split a little there on the ends and I couldn't get it to go through even though I had just cut that section um, but you'll see here I'm knotting the bottom and I want to put French knots in the four corners and do a running stitch in between them all the way around um, and this is a fairly good idea but here here you see me trying all of the beading stuff I've put my needle through there and I try two or three different beads you see my flower just then fell off guess why I did not let the fabric tack dry first so um, I'll notice it in a minute and I will put it back together I don't have to add any more glue because that fabric tack glue is still wet um, but I am trying to work on those French knots here and for some reason French knots I understand the process that you're supposed to do but when I pull it through it doesn't leave a knot sometimes it just kind of goes through your fabric and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong there so if you know please let me know by all means what I'm doing wrong there I also need a new stitch to play with so if you have a stitch that gives lots of decoration that you like please tell me about it in the comments below I'd love to give it a try I am trying to try hand stitching with stuff I have never been a hand stitcher I have not been one to have patience enough to hand stitch see I noticed that flower and I'm having to stick it back on there and um, it sticks a little better because it has had some time to get tacky in there so it goes ahead and sticks and I can move on and I have to straighten my little word out and I have that one little knot and I'm ready to start doing that um, running stitch across there and the running stitch is really easy you just weave in and out in and out the whole time um, oh here I am showing you that the beads did not fit and I try a couple of different ones but the holes are too small and I do have a bead reamer but I didn't have time for that today <laughs> so um, I get down to trying the one that has a larger hole here but once I get it on there I just don't like it it's just too big and clunky and it doesn't need to be um, so I decide against it you see me taking it off there and I was thinking because I am having trouble with my labyrinth quilt that I've been working on that I think I now have the problem figured out I was thinking I might do a troubleshooting video um, for those that are following that if that's something you'd be interested in me doing I can put that on there otherwise I'll just continue with the process of it um, but it took me quite a lot of, of learning and asking questions in order to figure out what the problem was um, with it so that's a, a work in progress I do want to do a another coloring book live pretty soon um, you guys let me know when when you think would be a good day for that I I don't know it depends on what I'm doing today if I if I get to it today or not but um, so far so good it is um, 720 in the morning here while I'm recording the voiceover on March 26 2022 you'll see here I'm trying to do those French knots in the corner again and it just does not want to stay 
it pulls through it looks like it might do it and then it just pulls straight through so I continue I try again I try to do another one and I try two or three times to get that knot I twist the thread around about five times and then I stick it back in but through a different spot not the same spot um, but it just doesn't want to I do eventually just move on and continue the running stitch because spirit stitching is supposed to be a happy time and not a frustration so I move on <laughs> And you'll see here I'm making my way to another corner. I like this color of floss with that. I think it's really pretty. I like the burlap. It gives it kind of a rustic um, elegance kind of look. So that's fun. I was, um, I think, I don't know if I already told you that in this video or not, but anyway, my pinking shears I got from Marketplace. I just searched left-handed pinking shears and found an ad from a woman that was selling a left-handed pair of vintage gingers, and she, the ad said that they were hardly ever used because no one they knew was left-handed, so that was good for me. So I got these in and they are pristine. They are absolutely beautiful and they work great. Um, pinking shears, if you don't know, takes a little bit more hand strength to work with than regular shears. Um, I, I have had um, a pair of regular scissors that were right-handed, that had were spring-loaded, and if you're right-handed, I would never have anything but spring loaded. They were amazing. They were gingers too. Um, but I ordered myself some left handed ones, and they don't do the same stuff for lefties that they do for righties. So um, it does not have spring load, which I miss dearly. Um, but back to our back to our picture thing here. We're making our little stitch page. You'll see we're on the home stretch of getting that stitch down. Just back and forth, back and forth, weaving in and out. And I stick my needle back through to the back so that we can tie it off in the back. And, oh, no, first I went over and tried that French knot again <laughs> in that corner. Oh, me and those knots, I'm telling you, we have not been friends lately. I'm working on them. Sometimes they work really good. Other times they just don't work at all. Here I am fiddling with it. Who I think I got the heat on too high in the house. It is too warm right now. now that's weird for me because I'm usually cold. All right, you see me smoothing it out because I didn't even cut the thread. I just pulled it straight across in the back and went went to town. <laughs> My grandmother would have had a fit. She says, you got to do it right the first time. But my other grandma says, she just don't, said she just don't want to act right sometimes, and I don't either. So since she don't, didn't, I think I should be entitled to not acting right. You see me here just splitting the floss and tying it off.
we have a really cool journal that we're working on with um, What Jen Wren Scraps and Xena the Sassy Crafter. And I have gotten all of mine inked up and ready for our next episode. So I hope that's coming up pretty soon. That's, that's a pretty fun journal. We've got the base made in our last video. If you didn't catch that, it is on What Jen Wren Scraps channel as a live video. Okay, here I am contemplating what to do with that corner. So, I pull back in that, that fabric panel, and I look, because these girls are just so stinking cute, and I kind of lay them along there and look at them, and some of them just aren't right. They're just not right. I'm telling you, I like how she looked, but then I keep going, looking at more. And I do end up deciding on that top one there. I did not realize you weren't able to see it, but now you can. And I cannot use the whole panel, obviously, because the spot is smaller. So what I do in order to preserve the sewing machine for another panel, I go around and I cut right above it so that it's still all intact for one another uh, slow stitching or spirit stitching and I know that I'm not able to use that border with it right now but I want to save that because I might use it on a future project it's a really cool little border you could put it on anything so we're carefully cutting her out and I get to her hair and realize I just can't cut her hair so I make myself go around it and then down because her hair is just too cute. It's just too cute. I know you can't see her face right there. I'm kind of working the fabric to get it where I can see it good. There we go. Now we're going back down to meet the other end. So I cut out the whole inside of the panel at once. Uh, you could have just cut off right above the sewing machine while it's still on there. However, I didn't think to do that. So here we're, I'm looking at it and kind of auditioning what I want of her on there. And here's where I decide right above that sewing machine is going to be a good spot to cut that off. So I do that, but I tell myself I better do it from the sewing machine side so I don't cut at an angle or something and kind of miss that machine. I kind of get that machine in the cut. And here I'm fixing to get my smaller uh, scissors out so that I can cut better around that hair because it, I don't want it to have all that extra stuff. I just want it to be a, her hair poking out. And that works really well. And now you'll see I'm laying that out up there. And we do need to cut that edge off. So I'm just lining it up and holding it together. And I'm going to use my regular scissors to cut those with, cut that with. And I move that to the side and could use it for another piece. So I am getting ready to stitch her on. Isn't she adorable? She's so much spunk and sass. I just love it. I just think she's just perfect. So, I'm moving the beads out of the way and getting ready to stitch her down. I decide I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to stitch her down because why not? I mean, it's there. I haven't used it on this piece yet. Might as well. So here we go, and as I get to the corners, I turn, get real close down there, then I flip it around, and I gotta make sure that she doesn't go wonky on me. And. Uh, 
as I am moving up, well, I gotta go a little bit further, and then I'm moving up, I need to go around her hair uh, because I don't want a line to stitch through it and that hair dangling. So I still keep the zigzag stitch, probably should have switched to a straight stitch, but I didn't. I just used the zigzag stitch and just slowly went around the curve of her hair. Being careful to make sure that the flower and everything is out of the way of it. And I try to decide, do I want to leave a pocket there or close it up? And I do decide just to close it up because I don't know what I'd put in there at this point. So here we go to put that side down. And guys, you know, if I have a chance to put glitter on something, I'm going to do it. So, I look for a fabric pen that I have, glitter fabric pen. I had one in silver, but I didn't like it because it left all the silver. And I didn't want all the silver. I just wanted glitter. But I remember something. I recently bought the Spectrum Noir kit from Maddie at um, Spectrum Art and I am so glad I did because there's one pen particularly in there one marker that I am absolutely in love with and I don't think you can buy it separate I hope you can when I need to refill it to get a new one but I'm not sure it's a clear glitter pen it is so pretty so I do end up bringing that over here and you will see that here in just a moment here I am almost back I see my shadow move and I'm gonna show you my pen it's the most wonderful thing ever I decide to do it in her hair to make her hair sparkle. She has a beautiful um, gray hair and I just know years of years, years going by she's earned sparkles. Everybody earns sparkles with time I think. And then I decided well what about them rosy cheeks? They need some sparkle. So I put a dot of it on each rosy cheek and then I get the rest of the hair that's down there and it's it flows so smoothly and effortlessly from that pen it's absolutely absolutely wonderful I mean the kit was like 28 or 29 dollars and I think I would have paid for the kit just for this pen now that I know that <laughs> that pen exists so I put it all up and um, get done with it I'm showing you the pen again really happy about that pen guys and now we need to put this into our book oh no first I decided I needed something else so I got buttons I remember but I didn't just get any buttons I got vintage buttons and I pulled two out one that's a little blue button I think it, it needs something then I pull this other one out and it is so ugly and I'm like no that cannot happen then I find this other vintage button that's a flower shape and I decide to stack them I'd never seen buttons stacked before but they both had two eye holes on them so it was easy to line them up when stitching through them so I'm using the same uh, floss that I did before that blue and I start with the flower button and I get my needle to go through the first eye and at that point it's time to bring in the blue button and go through its first eye and then go down on the other side the other eye and back through the flower button to the back 
I did that once and I know it needs it again. So I am fiddling with it, trying to get it back in the right hole, as I always do. I, I have trouble with buttons. <laughs> and so I'm looking at the back. Where did I stitch this thing at? And I find it. And I go through them again. And that is actually four threads now stitched down through there twice that are holding that button in. So I decide that's good enough. And I go to the back, nip it off, and just tie a little knot with the two threads. And clip off the extras. We don't want a bunch of dangling threads loose back there. All right, so our page is ready to be put in our book. It turned out so cute and fun, and it makes me smile. If something makes you smile, it is worth putting in something you will look at often. And I thought this was a really fun place for her. And I'm going to stitch this down, and I'm explaining to you that I'm stitching all of them on the right side directly to the page with the machine. And I'm doing this because the left side then I can go back and use but hand stitch to get them tacked down or glue. I can use fabric tack glue. Um, never underestimate your glue. So you'll see I'm going around here and I'm trying to be careful not to get in the lace. I stitch it all the way across. It looks like the beast is going in slow-mo here, but it's really not. She's really moving pretty good. I've got her set about halfway up on my speed dial. And I get to that corner, and I need to turn, so I turn the whole book in there. And notice here I'm moving that flower, those petals, out of the way of that flower. So. I go ahead and start stitching it and once I get up close to the flower I have to be very careful otherwise I'll stitch the petals down and they won't flow pretty they won't fluff pretty so I do that and I kind of angle around it a little bit and then get back in there and it is stitched guys is it a little wonky on the page sure I don't care. Wonky is good. Wonky is your friend. And anybody that tells you it's not is not your friend. That's what my Grandma D says. If they're looking that close, they are not your friends. So you'll see here I'm finishing off that top is what I'm doing. Um, just trying to get it stitched down across there. And you guys, we have completed another full page in our Spirit Stitch Journal. And I'm so excited about it. I will here in a moment flip through and show you what we've done so far. She's so cute. I can't believe the beast stitched through all of those batting pages. I was so proud of her. I'm explaining something to you here probably about the pages and I'm flipping back so I can show you from the beginning our pages we did that page we stitched this one I did a lot of those little French knots using a gold thread you can't see it very good in the picture but it's a metallic gold and then the pages that are blank this was the first page that I actually did and I made those um, yo-yos or Suffolk puffs is another word. I'm showing you the thread that I found. It's really interesting. It's kind of a multicolor thread. It has little knobs on it.